And I'm going to start the recording right now. So we are being recorded now. I record them. I put the um, class discussion on a YouTube channel that I have. So you can see all the all the different ones that I've done or I'm doing at the same time. Um, I also put little tidbits for the classes in there, um, extra things that you might want to do. And then I do record, um, Kay Arthur is who we're using for this one. Um, I do record it and I keep it on Zoom. You cannot download it. You cannot copy it. It is against the law, so don't do that. Um, but I leave it up for two or three days. So if you miss the class, you can catch that too. Um, and then I delete them. Okay. So we are going to, I'm going to share my screen with you. Oops. This class is Genesis part one. In the beginning, Genesis, lesson one. There's four, isn't that beautiful? That just rocks you to sleep, doesn't it? <laughs> I want to welcome you. And I've already started recording. Lots of people are in this class, so please mute and unmute to participate in class. It's just so we can keep the background noise down. This is a four week study, part one, the creation. There'll be part two is a seven week study. We'll study the fall, the flood, and the nations. Part three is becoming a friend with the faith of the faithful God, a study of Abraham. It'll be a six-week study. Wrestling with God, a study of Isaac, Jacob, and Esau will be next for four weeks. And part five will come in December, a study on Joseph, keeping your focus when your dreams are shattered. That's a, that's a good study. We will send out prayer requests. I ask that you just email them to me and then I'll send them out on, on the following Monday. All right. Um, is Robin is in my heart and you are here. Um, I'm sorry about your grandmother. Um, she just passed away. I hope everything went well. That was Catherine. Where's Catherine? Hi, Catherine Hayes. She's in Tennessee also. All right. Uh, yeah, I already told you about the class recordings. So you will get a email from me later on today with the recording links for each of the recordings. All right, ready to get to it? Get your homework out and let's hit it. Ready? One is Genesis 1 about and what was the chapter theme? Every chapter we have, we will do a chapter theme. That's part of the precept method. So I want to hear from y'all now. I have God's creation. How about that? <laughs> you think that's what it's about? <laughs> yeah, creation. I'm going to do something else here so I can see. I, I got to see y'all. I'm sorry. And I know this messes with you, but you'll, you'll get over it. I'll move it over here. There we go. God created the heavens and the air, and in how many days? Six days. In six days. What did you learn when you looked at verse one? What did you learn about verse one? There's a couple things that they had you do in your homework. In the beginning. It was in the beginning. What is the beginning? I felt it was like the first, the first thought of the earth. Okay. In the beginning, God. Now, that God is a plural Elohim. The I am at the end is a plural ending. But it's a singular verb. What do you make of that? God created. So God as a plural created as one. Do you see that? This is a I, neat thing about Hebrew. Go ahead. I took it as when I was learning about it, um, when we said in the beginning, it was more of a time frame of God. And then when we learned about Elohim, it was um, learning not only about creation, but about the Trinity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because God was there before anything existed, wasn't he? 
Can't even yes. imagine that, can I can't, you know. On day four, you looked at the plural noun for God, and we looked at some different things. How did the cross references talk about God? And why did we look at this is like I think on page nine, I, my pages may be different than y'all's. How does cross references from day four relate to God, plural, creating all? I think we it's interesting. If you look at um, verse, verses one and two, mm -hmm. um, one, two, and three. So in verse one, it mentions God as in God the Father. In verse two, it mentions the Spirit of God. And then in verse three, God said, and we know from John one, that Jesus is the word. And when you say things, you use words to create. See, God could have simply created things and boom, there they are. But um, I think it's interesting that, you know, of all of the ways that he created, he used his words a lot. The word was present there. And you see that in John one, but there's also hints of it too in Genesis. Excellent, yes, that's absolutely right. He spoke from heaven about his son on whom God's spirit descended in the form of a dove and John. So there's God, the father, the son, and the spirit. And then who do the cross references from day four relate to God? And John, we looked at one through one, one through four, Jesus is the word. He was in the beginning with God, and he is God. Yeah. Um, I was in John, um, one of the verses said that Christ, which I had never seen this, and it was powerful, Christ interpreted God and made him known. Yeah. That is interesting, isn't it? And we're going to get into that pretty deep, too. So let's look, continue on. On pages 9 and 10, we looked at Hebrews, Colossians, 1 Corinthians, and Revelation. What did you learn in these verses? I thought it was really interesting. Um, in Hebrews, uh, it said God spoke to in the early days, he spoke to the people, to the fathers through the prophets. And then <clears throat> in the last days, he's spoken, he speaks to us um, through his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. I think it's interesting to see how he, uh, how uh, in Hebrews, it goes back, back to, to Genesis again. And I just think it's interesting how, God adjusted things as time went on, spoke through the prophets, and then we're seeing those prophet, those prophecies that they were fulfilled and are being fulfilled. Yeah, and that's such I, I also like he said, he is the exact representation of God's mm -hmm. nature mm -hmm. and sits at the right hand of the majesty on high. Mm -hmm. He is exact res representation. What does that mean to you? Or in Colossians, it says Jesus is the image of God. In that he is God. Mm -hmm. Well, an image is something that you see. And it's interesting, the very first thing that God does is he creates light so that we can see things. And if you look at all of the things that he creates during the first six days, there so that we can understand who he is. So creation was to reveal, to show, to see, so that we can see who God truly is. Very insightful. Yes. What did you think about in Colossians says firstborn of all creation? Mm -hmm. When you study Colossians, which I have, you find out in this particular instance, the firstborn of all creation, it doesn't mean he was born at that time. He is the firstborn um, in hierarchy. 
Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For I him, also, I'm Go sorry. Ahead. No. From that, um, he was born from God. He was not created by God. And I, I mean, I thought the word born was specific, was very direct and not, he was not created by God. So he's not a lesser uh, being. Oh, that's good. Uh -huh. It also says for by him, all things were created. So it shows that Jesus was there at the creation, the Trinity. Yep, he was there. How about Revelation? What did you learn from that? He's sitting where? On a throne. Mm-hmm. What does he do? And what, how come he gets to do it? Is that a good way to put it? And Jesus opened the seals because he was worthy to open the seals. There you go, Sharon. That's right. He's the one. He's the only one who's worthy of opening the, the seals. All Cre things were, all things were created through him, and nothing exists without him. Yeah, because there's a the neat. Oh gosh, I, this just popped in my mind. There's a neat um, teaching. I can see the guy in my face, in my head, in my mind's eye, um, that teaches that there's a, something in our blood or our DNA or whatever that keeps us together. Anyway, I'll find it and show it to you it's, later. I'm sorry. It's Louis Linolin. Giglio and yes. it's, um, oh, laminin. Laminin, that, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting, and then they took a picture of it, and one picture looks like a cross, but when you research it more, it's kind of made to look that way. But I don't know, people, but it holds everything in our bodies together. Without that chemical, we'd just be loosey-goosey all over the place. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I mean, it, it's just weird, you know? All right, well, moving on to, um, this is in day four, 1B on page eight of your homework. That's when all that means, if you can read my, the way my brain works, okay? What did you wor learn about the word? In total. I think we covered that, though, really, didn't we? Um, in, in the qual stem, the verbs in Hebrew have these stems. I am not a language person, y'all, so I don't understand a lot of this. But the word bara is used in the Old Testament only of God's activity. Before God created any, everything, there was only God. There was nothing except him, so creation was out of nothing. And how does that compare to Hebrews 3? This is on day 4. 1B. I'm what sorry is? for interjecting here, but go uh, ahead. It does say that water was already there. Mm -hmm. So, do you know that? Pardon me. Do you know that? Yes, and it says that. Um, let's see here. I'm looking for the verse. In verse six. Oh. Two. No. Verse two, yeah. Yep. God was moving over the surface of the waters. So water was already there. Mm -hmm. Well, my translation says the earth was formless and void, and the darkness was over the surface of the deep. Deep reading. You have to go back to verse. And one. the Spirit of God was moving on the surface of the waters. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But go back to verse one. It said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Thank you, Catherine. It says the earth was formless and void, etc. But the first verse tells us that he created it. Okay. 
Does that make sense? It's not, it's not in chronological order. Is is I think that's, it's kind of. Actually, I think think it's chronological order, but there are a number of, uh, there are a number of of, uh, commentators, if you will, who believe basically there's a break between in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Right. But their their thesis is that God wouldn't have created something that was void and formless. Something happened in between those two verses. Uh, we don't okay. know. It's not real sorted. Now that's, that's yeah, that's that's a theory. That's a theory. It's a theory. It's speculation yeah. on their part. But I agree more with Barbara when she said that you have to take this in context, not in literal A B C D. Because if you go back over and well, as we get on, you're going to see this more and more because in chapter two, he fills in more of chapter one. Okay, so let's just hang on with that as we go on. All right. And I think it'll become more and more clear. And the resource, this is Kathy, the resource you gave us was very helpful to clarify some of that based on the Greek meaning of the word. I think it was yam. Yeah. Y-O-M. That was very helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And the good questions. Okay. I always say there's no such thing as a stupid question. Please remember that. Because you should have heard me when I first started studying. I drove my teacher nuts. Okay. By faith, we understand that the world literally means ages. We're prepared by by the word of God so that what was seen was not made out of things which were visible. This is where going into the deeper meanings of the words will help. And we are just skimming chapter one this today, okay? Next week, we get into it a lot deeper, all right? Keep that in mind. So how does verse two continue from verse one? It's going to be good class. <laughs> you guys are challenging. It gives an explanation of verse one after the heavens and the earth were created of what it looked like. Yes, exactly. And I think that kind of answers our question that we were talking about before. Two describes the earth that God created in verse one. I look at verse one as an introduction. Yeah. And then two gets into the specifics of it. Okay. Yes. It builds on each other. Mm-hmm. So it was formless and void. Go ahead. I was going to say the same thing you just said. It was formless and void. It was, no. he, was, he was taking it all and putting it into shape. Yes. He created it. And then goes, okay, now what do you, okay, so the surf, the spirits hovering around it's formless and void hebrew the watery depths a single word in hebrew suggests an original state of creation that was shapeless and liquid water Mm -hmm. so when he first created it it was water it was formless there was confusion unreality emptiness empty space unreal is figuratively wasteland is for places of chaos so it was chaotic it was not in order yet Another interesting thing to look at in that verse is mm-hmm. um, the verb, <clears throat> the verbal form of was moving. It's based off of the Hebrew word, I mean, mispronounced rakhaf, um, yeah. which is a sense of like moving, hovering, but um, as a like bird hovers over chicks or as a mom hovers over children's like, um, it's like when you say, oh, that moved me, you were affected by it. Um, and you have a feeling of deep, tender love and cherishing. And the, um, the verbal is um, appeal stem, which means it's intensive, which means not just he moved, but like it was exceedingly moved, like mm-hmm. very, very much this feeling of overwhelming, excessive, tender love. Very good, Miranda. You, we know where our word person is now. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Yeah. And, and we will, I think it's next week we actually get into that. So, but yeah, that's great. The void was empty, waste to be empty, ruined, and indistinguishable. I actually said that word, (laughs) y'all. Hovering. Here's our hovering, okay? 
to brood over young ones, just as Miranda said, to cherish the young in Deuteronomy. So it's to cherish. It's used of the Spirit of God who brooded, and brooded means exactly what Miranda said. It was to lovingly, you know, gather it together and sh make the shapeless mass of the earth cherishing and vi vivifying. That's giving life to. It was giving life to the earth, to this watery mess. In my version of the Bible, it says that God was hovering and brooding. Mm -hmm. over the faces of the water. And oh, I that's just, neat. They added the brooding. That's, that's neat, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he was, in my mind, he was making an intellectual decision as to how he was going to do this, how he wanted to form creation. And I thought that was just so powerful. That is. That's a neat perspective. He also described it as darkness and waters, you know? And the, um, the Complete Word Study Bible says that the word void, mm -hmm. um, it is used here and it is used in Isaiah and Jeremiah to describe the state of the earth after God judges it. I thought that was amazing. Really? Mm. Yeah. That'll be interesting. How about verse three? And in light. And yeah. God said. He, he said, said. That's, so that's Jesus. He said, let there be light. Because it's the spoken word. Mm -hmm. Yep. Spoken. He said. That's a powerful. He spoke light into existence. By the way, the word is used nine times in Genesis 1. How powerful is God's word? This is your cross-references that we're going to refer to on page 9 of your homework. And this is pre pretty much going over what we already said. John 1 says Jesus himself is called the word of God. Kind of makes the word kind of important. <laughs> In Genesis and Hebrews, the power of God's word is clearly shown. You know, it was Genesis, you know, the spirit of God hovering, moving over the surface of the waters. He was forming it. He was working through his word. And he communicates through man, through his spoken word, written for us. When I learned in this, what do you learn from that? Let's not talk about me. Let's talk about you. What, what do you learn about the word of God in this? Push your, push your brain a little bit farther to reach out. Mm -hmm. What is God doing for us with his word? Nothing happens without it being said. Yep. He watches over his word to perform it. Yes, he does. With just a word, he's, he's creating. It, he didn't have to do any work. He just spoke it and it happened. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think with his word, he's revealing himself to us. Absolutely, Chelsea. That's how he has chosen. It's his method of communication. So that tells you that this word, this Bible that we're reading, which has been preserved by the Jewish people through all this time, pretty much word for word. And I is, think it reveals it, Jesus to us. Yes. It reveals who God is through Jesus. You know, the thing that struck me consistently throughout this was not just what God said and all of the, those facts. It was how important my words. I'm made in the image of God, and what I say should be in line with what he says. And it, there, it makes you more careful what you say. I like that. That's something to sit on for a little bit, isn't it? And, and it also stresses how important God's word, the first thing he did was make light. Because without light, are the plants going to grow? You know, are the animals going to be able, are we going to be able to see and function? Mm -mm. But mm -mm. no, his, his word brings light and that's how we live is by his light. But it wasn't the sun yet, it was the light. Right. Thank, Later, you, Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Catherine. 
And we're going to go right into that. So what did God do in verses four and five? And what did you learn about day? It starts in the evening. Now, isn't that neat? <laughs> I still don't get that, but you know, I figure God will explain it to me one day. And but it's yeah. interesting that in ancient times, when he <laughs> named something or someone, he was claiming domination or ownership of the thing. So when God called the light, then he owned that. And that would, would, would spill over into letting him letting us, uh, Adam, name the animals. You know, that gave him dominion and ownership over them. Yep. Light is contrasted with darkness. And in, 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 in the inductive method of study, one of the things that you look for is contrast, okay? So light is contrasted with darkness and then named day. And day is defined, as you said, as evening and morning one day. We looked at Exodus 20, 1 through 3 on page 11 of your homework. What did we learn about day, the word day? And you know I specifically have, we're going in one direction, right? Exodus. What does it say about day? So Moses compared the six days of work to the six days of creation. That proves that creation was all completed in days. Yes, in 24-hour periods, correct? Mm -hmm. Where are we going with this, do you think? He rested on the seventh day, right? Mm -hmm. Right. He's setting up the Sabbath. He's setting up the Sabbath, comparing literal 24 days of creation. And the day seems to start with the evening first, and then the daytime. Okay, so could it be a million years? No. 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 10 million? No. Not according to the word of God in the, in the way that we're looking at it, correct? Correct. So what did you learn on Second Peter? That one day could be a thousand years. What is he talking about? The second coming of Jesus. Is it the second coming of Jesus? No. <laughs> no. Oh. He's, he's, no. He, he's talking about Time is uh, yeah. long for people and short for God. Okay, in Second Peter, talking about the, in the context, though, it's talking about Jesus' second coming. If you read the whole chapter, well, but in Second Peter three eight, he's talking about the patience of the Lord. You have to read the verses. I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I, I know he's talking about that. He's waiting for everybody to come to Jesus to return. Yes, but in that particular one, he's talking about. God's patience. God is patient. Time means nothing to him because who created time? Yeah, man created. Man created. It's it's a man, man created time. Well, but doesn't it say God called it one day? Yeah. Well, yeah. I yeah. Think in verse <laughs> five. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think verse five says says that that. Um, you know, that's when time was created. I think so, too. Mm -hmm. You know, because he created a day that sets it in motion. It gives it a beginning and an end. Yeah. Ne the main point about these two scriptures is neither context is about God creating in thousands of years. And a lot of people have taken these two scriptures and say, see? Evolution exists. Actually, if you read some of the rest of Psalm 90, in fact, I pray it all the time. It's one of my favorite prayers. Mm -hmm. Teach me to number my days. Yes. That both of those verses ref are, are, should inspire us, should direct us to think in terms of God's patience and his long suffering. 
and uh, he, he tells us, te number your days, think about time, think about how much time you don't have to do your, his will, not waste it. And <laughs> Psalm 90 goes on and that's what it comes out at. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is such a silly thing, but that's so important what Lisa said, because I've learned in my elderly days, you know, that my days are numbered, you know, I'm on the last part of my life rather than the first part of my life. And there's just so much time I have left. So there's things like, I want to learn how to be a gourmet chef. Well, that may have to wait until eternity. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I don't think I have enough time to learn how to be a gourmet <laughs> chef, you know, or how to quilt, you know. Um, you know, there's just, I love to do things, you know, I just, I, I love art, I love to paint, I love to sew, I love to knit, I, you know, but I don't have time in the day to do everything, you know, it's wise to use your time wisely, is it not? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Catherine does the same thing I does, that's what yeah. she's saying, absolutely, yeah. we want to yeah. do so many things, don't we? <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I was like, ah. <laughs> so, so if you were to just summarize, what did God do in verses one through five? I'll start you off. He created the heavens and earth. What else did he do? This is just summarizing. He created light from darkness. There you go. He saw it and he called it what? I'm good. I love it. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Good. Then what did he do? He called the darkness night and the light day. Yes, and that was separating the light from the darkness. And then he called it evening light day. and morning. Yeah, yeah, and he named it, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So he spoke it and then he named it. I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, then we go to verses six through eight on day two. We're on day two. You know, we got six days to go through. So <laughs> this is just. Overview, remember? Day two. What did God do? When did he do it? Uh, he separated the waters from the heavens. And what did he call that? He used that word expanse, didn't yeah. he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll look at that word next week, okay? So he again did what? God said. Yes. He also did another separation of the waters below and the expanse of the waters above it. Mm -hmm. And he called the expanse heaven. Mm -hmm. And then there's a timing, Thank another you. evening and a morning, a second day. Mm -hmm. Verses 9 through 13, when action took place and when. He separated the dry land from the waters. Another separation. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he called the dry land earth, and he called the waters the seas. Absolutely. And he saw that it was good, didn't he? Mm -hmm. I believe, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe I read that there is more water on earth than there is land. Yes. Oh. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And it'll be the opposite when, in the new world. Mm. A nine-year-old sitting here said it's 75% water. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and in the new world, it's gonna be less water and more land. Yep. I think it's interesting that we're actually a big percentage of water. Yeah, yes. even our bodies are, That's aren't they? That's in our bodies, like 70% water? More like 90. More like eighty, really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And we don't, and we don't drink enough of it. <laughs> no, we don't. We have to have water to live, don't we? Yeah. It gives us life. It gives the earth life. It does. Yeah. You should have seen the water here raining out of the clouds. <laughs> I was gonna say it also helps you clean up a baby because. Our, our pump went bad yesterday, and we had no water. <laughs> oh, no. Really made me appreciate water. Oh, I you know. know. 
You don't miss your well till it runs dry, right? <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Yeah, and as we're studying Genesis, you're going to find that this water is so important, even to the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. Yeah. There's Anne. And there was a, wait a minute, I forgot that. And there was the third day, another evening and the morning. So what does this tell you about God's order and creation? Perfect. Yeah. And that, that's why you have to go back to the fact that he was hovering and brooding over the waters because he was thinking how he wanted to lay out his creation. And you just see a systematic order to what he's doing. And it says a lot about us in our lives that God has a systematic order in how he answers our prayers. Mm -hmm. I think it's, that was the other thing that struck me is that everything that he created was built upon the thing before. Mm -hmm. that, that whatever it was that was being created could not have been created without what had gone before it, it was line upon line and it was in order and it, it couldn't have happened if the prior stuff hadn't happened first it was in order yeah, God Aaron, did it he did it in that particular order for us he could have done it in a snap of a finger he could have mm -hmm. done it all at one time mm -hmm. but he chose to do it this way one day at a time as a lesson to us that he can do this it's his perfect will it's his perfect plan and to do mm -hmm. it in six days knowing what was going to come that we would need that lesson later i think that lesson of his being so intentional that we can see that he was intentional in in that so we can understand that he's so intentional in our lives and that okay. again everything is built on everything yeah. I think that's why uh, the day starts with the evening um, to me, because the, in the evening, it's a time to think about tomorrow. What you're going to do tomorrow. And, and set things in order and prioritize and, and for the next day. To me, that's the reason the day starts with evening rather well, than. Well, our day still start in the evening I like that. because it starts at midnight. Our day starts at midnight. We just happen to have our daylight hours in the middle. <laughs> the day still starts at midnight. But he created the water, then the light, and the earth before the plants, and the plants for food before the creatures to eat the plants, and the creatures before man to rule over the creatures. He has an order to everything. If you have anything that doesn't make sense or is chaotic, it is not from God. Because God takes chaos, just like he took the chaotic woman that I used to be and formed me into a new creation. Amen. And I'm so thankful to him for that. So then we go to verses 14 through 19. Now, when we get in deeper in this, this one I find just fascinating. Day four. Let's talk about day four. What are these verses about? Which day was it? It was day four, duh. God said, lights in the expanse of the heavens. Second what did he say about the these lights? The, light, the sun and the moon and the stars. He created time, mm -hmm. the seasons, because before this, there was no time. Now there's seasons. Why did he, yeah, well, let's talk. Why did he create these things? It's, it's, it tells us in it. the scripture. He says for signs and for seasons, for days and for years. That's why he did it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, when is it? Okay, but he talked about light earlier. Mm -hmm. Well, to give light a, to the earth. I think it was more for our benefit that that light was a very nebulous. I mean, it was there, but we didn't have a sun and a moon and a stars and and things to give us the signs and seasons and days and years and the light's kind of just there rather than having a source of it that we can look at and go oh yeah there's the sun it's daytime <laughs> how about um jesus is the light of the world just throwing that in 
Although light and days have been mentioned before in Genesis 1 in these verses, God spoke of specific lights. So there was light day and night before God created the sun, moon, and stars. It's interesting, isn't it? We will get in deeper to that, okay? God placed them in the expanse of the heavens to do what? To give light to the world. To give light to the world? What else did he give it to us for? Signs and for seasons. Mm -hmm. Rule over the day and night. And there you go. The light from the darkness. There you go. And God saw that it was good. <laughs> and it was a fourth day. So I see some people are having trouble getting, keeping in with us. It was a fourth day described by evening and morning. Verses 20 through 23. What happened and when? Oops. It was the ocean and creatures created and the birds. Yeah. So he created little fishies and birdies before <laughs> he created us, right? Mm -hmm. And the great and, sea yeah, yeah, monsters. monsters. I like how he put it that way. The great sea monsters let him know he created everything. Mm -hmm. There's no question. Have you have feel? I'm no, I know you have, but it, isn't it amazing when you see when cameras go down into the deep ocean and the beauty that is down there. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, and there, and in the ocean, there are undiscovered creatures that are there that man has not even seen. I know. Yeah, every time they go down, they find something new. Mm -hmm. Isn't that Something amazing? Something that's been there all along. It's new to us, but it's not new. Exactly. On, um, I don't know if you've ever been to the Ark, but I've been there. It's in um, Pittsburgh somewhere. Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah, it's Kentucky, thank you. And it, it's really cool. But I listened to some of their, um, they have a weekly on Mondays, they have this um, sit down and talk. And they were talking about they found this creature that they hadn't been discovered before that when it's young, can actually detach its heads from its body and grow a new body. What? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, you just kind of sit there and go, isn't God just so <laughs> weird? Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> just, you know yeah. they find little things like that, and they go, isn't that just amazing, you know? But the older they get, they don't, they can't do it, you know? And they, so they were talking about, well, you know, once you get older, who cares, you know? Just live with the body. Yeah, they got funny. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to go there, you know, I, I learned all this weird, weird stuff. Okay, so he saw that it was good, and he did something else that he hadn't said before. What, what else did he say on this fifth day? He said to be fruitful and multiply. Yes, he did, and he... Blessed them. There you go. First time the word blessed is used and telling them to be fruitful and multiply. This took place on the fifth day, another evening and morning. 24 and 25 of day six. When did you learn? I think we may get through this. <laughs> All the living creatures on the earth, man and woman, and the provisions of food for them. Yeah, God said for the earth to bring forth creatures. I like that, bring forth. <laughs> he made the beasts, the cattle, the creeping things on earth. He made cockroaches, y'all. I still haven't figured that one out. <laughs> and ants. And ants. ants. Well, ants, ants have a good purpose. Well, cockroaches have no purpose. They do. That Everything has a purpose. We may not like it, but it's there. <laughs> Thank I don't you. like them either, especially yeah. the flying ones in Texas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I ran into that in Louisiana, and they're big honkers, too. Yeah. I mean, scared me And the me noise to death. they make. I know. They're, they're scary little critters. They are. Okay, but he saw that it was good, didn't he? And then we have verses 26 through 30. What are these verses about? And he made man in our image, which was his image according to their likeness 
and letting them roll over the fish in the sea and over the birds in the sky and the cattle and the creeping things on earth. So he made man and woman. And what did he tell them? He gave them dominion. Mm -hmm. Yes, and be fruitful. Um. And he blessed them and to be fruitful and to multiply. And to subdue. Yes, and to subdue it. We're not even being faithful to be fruitful and multiply in these days. No. Because we think we know better than God. Lexi, I understand your problem. It's okay. God provided for man and the creatures he created. He created food for us, right? Plants yielding seed and fruit trees as fruit trees as food for man and for living creatures and plants. What does that tell you about what they ate? Yeah, you know, that was really interesting to me because man was not to eat meat. No, not but the, the animals are and man was to eat what the earth yielded, the fruit of the trees and the fruit of the earth. Yeah. So I thought that was really interesting. And then after the fall, we began to eat the animals, but that wasn't God's plan in the beginning. Yeah, well, there was no God, gave him, God gave permission to eat meat after the flood, and we will be learning that, okay? Yeah. Yeah. There, there was no death until the fall. Correct. Denise, again, uh, relating to Elohim and the Trinity, let, let mm -hmm. us make man in our image. Uh -huh. Yeah, in our image, yes, the plural, the I am. Oh, I just got that, the I am. It sounds I like am. I am. Oh, my. Okay, sorry. What's interesting, too, is <laughs> verse 27, he repeats it three times. He created man in his image, in the image of God. He created them, male and female, he created him. So um, it also ties in the three persons of God. He's giving us hints throughout about who he is. Yeah, the number three. Yeah. If you ever study numbers, the, the numbers in the Bible, like, you know, the actual numbers, not the book of numbers, which I'm in, you know. Anyway, um, it, it's, it's real interesting. So God's order in his creation, he shows us provision for all of his creation. When else does he show us? Y'all, and I do send you out this whole PowerPoint. Did y'all catch that in my emails? I didn't get the PowerPoint. Yeah, I didn't either. Nor did I. Did anybody get it? I got it. 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 It came this morning. I did it. Oh, okay. It's at the bottom of the email. You have to, yeah. open. You have to, you have to search open. for it. I don't, yeah. Well, I you know, you think you actually it. send a PowerPoint or a PDF? Yeah. In my uh, emails yeah. each week before, usually on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, <laughs> depending it, it, on it how, when, when, yeah, I think it went on on Wednesday this week because, um, like I said, my kitchen's torn apart. Actually, that's kind of put back together. But that's another story. Um, so I was late this week, but I always send the PowerPoint. I send it in a PDF. Right. And I send out handouts if there's anything pertaining, which, by the way, with Genesis, there's something every week. Because Genesis is huge. Okay? Yep. So look again at the email, and you will see it at the bottom. Okay? Okay. That's yep. just a normal thing that I do. Yeah, it's called Lesson One Genesis Handouts. Thank you. You're welcome. And it always says something like that. It'll say what lesson number it is, and it'll say what subject it is, because some of my people take both classes from me, and it's like, well, is this for numbers, or is it for Genesis, you know, and they get all confused. Or they, like Catherine Hayes, only I won't name names, you know, we'll go into the wrong class, you know. Anyway. <laughs> How does Hebrews 11, 1 through 3, and 6 relate to this study? And we might need to just kind of look at those scriptures, wherever they are. 
By faith, we understand. Okay. Yes. It says that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. Ah. What does that tell you? Things were not made out of something visible. That God created the heavens and the earth. He created it out of nothing. There was nothing there. He spoke and created the heavens and the earth. What does evolution teach you? Big Bang. Well, in some point of this, I, I need to understand where the dinosaurs fit in. They're there. They're in the Bible. They are in the Bible, and we they will run in into them. We will they're run in into them. Mm -hmm. The behemoths. They're just terrible lizards. They're terrible lizards. Okay. Mm -hmm. When you go to the ark, you know, it explains mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. after the flood, they died because they couldn't survive. Mm -hmm. Well, they all died anyway. But you know, they just, um, there is a certain kind of evolution. There's, there's, oh, how do you say it? Environmental changes, you know, because they have to um, survive different ways. You got to go to the ark. They can explain it a lot better than I can. But there's also a creation museum in California. It's closed right now because of COVID, but people on the West Coast, there's <laughs> one here. It's, a, it's smaller, but mm -hmm. it's still amazing. And it goes through all of that. Yeah, it really does. And explains, you know, how the whole topography of the earth changed, you know, because it actually started raining, you know. We'll get into that when we get into the, the flood. It's very interesting. <laughs> This is relevant to today because um, if you don't believe the Bible, you're not going to have a good foundation. And, and it they, starts with Genesis. And it starts with Genesis, Genesis. doesn't it? You've got <laughs> yeah. to get this. This is foundational. In the beginning. Yes. Yes, in the beginning. And, and I mean, it's just so important to understand this um, and that we don't change the word of God. It, it, I mean, you can't change what he said. And this is one, one thing about this class. Um, and if you have difficulty with this, I understand. And we can, we can um, just hang in with the study. But um, you have to understand that we are coming from that this is the word of God, that this is the truth. It is the only way to get to know him, and it's the only way to get to know his ways is through his word. And I, I so hope you learn the importance of obedience and faith. You know, for some reason, it's not just in the beginning. To me, it has always been... In the beginning, God. Yes. That, that it's not just in the beginning. It is in the beginning, God. Because he's preeminent. He's more important. He's, he's the essence of all. And, and it's interesting, too, that we are all here by no coincidence. We're here together to learn about this. And in just the perfect time for us to learn about this. So... It's taken me 64 years to get to this point. <laughs> and I'm happy to be here to learn more about God. So when did y'all think of the first study? Love first. it. Awesome. We're, we're going to get deeper. We are. I'm trying to see. Did anybody else pop in that I didn't know about? Or pop name. out? No, Jerry always leaves early. What? You ask um, what we got out of it. It is so familiar. You know, how many times have we read it? Have we heard sermons on it? Have we studied it? And yet, there is just so much more there. I, mm -hmm. You know, I to read your mind. And I'm, I'm sitting here today going, wait a minute. You know, <laughs> let me get my brain around some of this. So, 
Awesome. That's what I was going to say. It was things that you, you were raised learning and you know about, but then the depth is so much more. Like I didn't realize that when we spoke of day, you always knew like there is like different definitions, but the time frames, it's so vast. And um, the speaking of the like the Trinity um, and Elohim, it, I would have never thought to do a word uh -uh. study to really dig deeper into the background of it and to really understand the different perspectives like that. I would have never. I'm really blessed to be able to share this with my grandchildren because of what they're being taught in school these days. To really be able to present this to them in a way that that's logical and they can understand. I feel empowered by it. Thank you, Kathy, because it is so important because what they're teaching in the schools today, well, A, are just lies. If you'll go to Answers in Genesis, he has excellent books for children on the truth, on Answers in Genesis. All their books are great. And there's one about dinosaurs, or two or three. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do this with my little one. It's called Who Created It by Kay Arthur. Amazing. Yeah, Kay Arthur has a lot of good books, too, you know, mm -hmm. out there. Or preset. Yeah, I've been following Kay since my kids were little. And as you know, my daughter, who is 28, is in the class, too. So, you know, I've done a couple of, of studies. Um, I did Genesis way back when Genesis was a 26-week study. Genesis 1 was a 26-week study, and Genesis 2 was a 26-week well, study. Well, she did a lot of science back then, didn't she? Yes, it was, yeah, it was long, the science it was tough. Was but it was awesome. I mean, yeah. we did four weeks on Ruth. Um, but it, to have my daughter now in the class is, is like, it's amazing for her Blessing, to, to be it? here and wanting to do it. So Blessing. I'm so glad it's still going and it will continue to keep going. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can, yeah. Lexi. Oh, Your mother's okay, talking about phone. you. <laughs> yeah, I was on my phone. So I was like, I don't know if they can hear. Yeah, it's been... Um, my, my soul's been so stirred lately, um, and I was talking to my mom about Genesis, and I had, like, been reading about Bereshit and what it meant in Hebrew, and, like, I, I'm, my soul's just been so stirred, and I just kept writing in my journal that, like, I experience truth as peace. I experience truth as peace. If I feel stirred, it's not God, and so, like, when I, when I finally, like, started reading and reading and reading, it, like, finally hit like okay now I'm feeling like peace I feel like okay I'm finding truth now I'm finding like real like truth it just I don't know I just feel uh, it gives better. you peace doesn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah we know exactly what you're going through Lexi it's blessing to have that hunger and thirst I mean that's the one thing I pray every day for my kids for my grandkids for myself uh -huh. is that God will stir that hunger and keep that hunger and thirst and searching for him, who he is. Same prayer for all our children and grandchildren. Oh, yeah. yeah. My children are so messed up. But I pray for them, and that's all I can do. Well, I am going to stop mm -hmm. this particular recording.